votes. So uh, good morning from uh, Texas. I believe it would be good evening for many of you uh, or good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alex Etzel. I'm the program director for the MSN Marketing. And uh, today's uh, meeting is to discuss um, incoming international student uh, enrollment for the spring. Uh, if you have any questions, please use the MS Marketing email. The, it will get a much faster response. Myself and Professor Dickinson monitor it. We have a lot of templates because we get a lot of repetitive questions that we can easily copy and paste there. So it will be a much faster response time. Uh, and this meeting is recorded. If you cannot stay till the end, we will be sending out <clears throat> a link to this recording and also some of the documents um, that I addressed during the presentation. We'll also provide those uh, in a couple of hours. We'll send an email out uh, with that uh, link and information. So one of the things I wanted to mention is we have kind of a student ambassadors slash uh, MS Marketing Executive Leadership Council. And you can see the names of the students here, their different roles. But what they do is throughout the semester, uh, they <coughs> answer questions of incoming students, but mainly they spend time uh, developing meetings and events for current students. So for example, we just had one uh, recently. Let me see, I think I have it. Um, this is their um, how to connect with them. So you'll have this information, so don't worry about trying to connect now. But for example, we had a recent meeting uh, this uh, week where we had one of our professors, Dr. Biswas, talk about you know overcoming culture shock, international students coming to the United States and kind of the first couple of semesters things to expect, things uh, that are unexpected sometimes, how to best network and fit in. Uh, so a lot of events like that. Then uh, we also have an event uh, where we talk with one of our marketing alums who is currently international student who is working at Mary Kay as a product manager. So all this information goes out once you're in the program in a weekly newsletter um, and that has information about workshops, jobs, scholarships, events, etc. So one of the biggest questions we get is I don't know which track to pick. So one of the things that we see with some percentage of incoming students is they don't have a lot of uh, work experience and hopefully their goal by getting a master's degree is to be in a managerial role, not immediately, right? Because when you don't have work experience, it's unlikely you will get into that role right away. But eventually, uh, maybe in three years or so, if you have no work experience or almost none to speak of. But really one of the uh, <clears throat> traits that companies tell us is often lacking with new hires is that they're unable to solve any kind of unusual complex problem they are not used to thinking critically, okay? Everybody thinks they know how to think critically, but that's not the case. Uh, and one of the things that you have to do getting into the program, because it's not something like we have a course that teaches you this. We try to embed some of these skills in many courses, but a lot of this should come, you should be coming into it with the program. And that's often not the case. Before you can solve a problem, you at least have to be aware that you have a problem, right? Uh, people are not motivated maybe to start exercising on a regular basis if they think they're fit and they've never done it, so they don't need it. Once you recognize that for health reasons, uh, it might be necessary that you do, then you can begin that journey. Whether you later do it or not is another issue. But at least be aware this is something that's really important. Uh, it's not something, again, the figuring out which track to pick that's going to happen overnight. Nobody, it, you, you can't sit with anybody and myself or anybody else. Nobody can tell you do this because that's not the approach to picking your career path. You have to inform yourself, develop it, ask the right questions, and then start to find your path. But if you're passive, that's just not a good trait if you want to be a manager. 
Okay. So how do you do it? Reading. We see a lot of students try not to read. They want to scan. They want to get an instant answer. Uh, but unfortunately, it is a process. You have to do some research reading. And one of the most important things is you have to do a very internal critical assessment of your skills and weaknesses. So for example, one of the traps that we see is many students say, okay, uh, big data, data science, this is the thing. AI, da, 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 everybody's going in that direction, <clears throat> most hiring, um, best pay, more visa opportunities. All of that is true, but it doesn't mean that you will be successful in that area. I've had students who want to be in that uh, track, in that career path, who get a C, B minus in statistics, who take any kind of programming class and they just can't even complete it. Clearly, that's not your skill set. You can try and huff and puff, but if that's not your skill set and you don't like it, you have to remember that you're facing competition from people who love statistics, who love programming, who are very skilled and adept at it. So those that's the, an example of the type of critical assessment you have to make. For example, I would never succeed in data science. I don't like to do programming. And I, um, while I have a basic understanding of statistics, I don't like to be doing statistics every day. That's not my skill set, not my passion, et cetera. Okay. So this is a really important thing because I just keep seeing some percentage of students take those courses, flunk not one, but two, three, and four. And at some point they should realize, but it kind of starts to get too late. They should have taken other courses. Uh, all of you will be taking a professional development one credit hour course, which will help you determine your choice in which track to pick. So for this first semester, picking a track should not be uh, uh, something you have to have an answer for. Yeah, you have to start thinking about it, researching it, but you will not, you should not have an answer. Now, some of you may already know that you want to do, for example, the digital track, and you're well informed of that. And in that case, that's perfectly fine and legitimate, okay? So there's three pieces of information you will be uh, presented with. You can start uh, looking at this information before you start the program. Uh, one is a video that goes through uh, all the different options, speaks to some of these issues that I've alluded to about a critical assessment of your skills, etc. The other one is, you know, we have blogs too, but, you know, uh, we, we don't see a lot of readership on it. And it's also hard to have all that information in a easy to look at comparison, right? career A versus career path B. So what we've done is we have, and again, we'll send this to you and you will also see it in your professional development class. We have uh, provided this information in a very uh, easy to uh, look at uh, tables. So for example, here's marketing automation. And again, this is just a screenshot. There's many, many more. It tells you what it is. Many of you maybe have never heard of it or just heard of it, but don't know exactly what it entails. And what we've done is we've done the research for you. So the only thing you have to do is now scan, read this information. How many of the years of experience do they usually require employers to get into a full-time role? You can get in as an intern, kind of as an assistant to these roles, okay? You never usually will start out with zero experience because it's something you have to obviously work to. But you'll have a, <clears throat> a huge advantage if you've taken the courses and the software to get into that role. What are the average salaries for those folks that have that uh, those that years of experience? What is the size of the job market? And by that, what we mean is how many jobs are currently posted in different websites. It's not the total number of jobs in the United States, it's how many are posted you know, at any given time. 
Then we talk about what's the software that's commonly used, okay, uh, in this role. Then we talk about the skills. We've read through some of the top postings, anywhere from 10 to 15 big companies, medium-sized companies. And what are the typical skills they request or require in addition to the software? And then we map for you those skills to the courses. So let's say that you are interested in like e-commerce and marketing automation. You want to get into that side of digital. This is something you have to kind of then look at. Look at all these courses. And maybe you can't take all of them because at the end of the day, this is a 36 uh, credit hour program uh, of those. You've got um, core electives. So you're really only left with 21 uh, electives to pick from. Um, so, you know, uh, maybe you won't be able to take all of these, but maybe there's some common courses like interactive and digital is a skill set that helps in both areas. That's what you have to you know, do at some point. Okay. <clears throat> and then to further help you, we have this table that shows all the marketing courses that we offer with the, you know, the information, the course, prerequisites, software. Is there any certification within the course itself? And what are the topics covered? And the way this can help you is if you're trying to decide between this course, this course, and this course, these are, we try to bunch the more analytics data analysis courses together. So they're, you know, not on two or three pages. You can see at a glance more easily what are the differences, okay? Beyond this, you can also go to the syllabus of this individual course and get some additional information. Yeah, but is it all exams? Is it all projects? We don't put that information because it can vary from year to year, from professor to professor. OK, so that's where you have to take the extra step and look at the syllabus. So with all that, <clears throat> one of the things I uh, want to kind of go over at a very high, quick level is our tracks. You will be uh, seeing this in professional development, so I won't go into a lot of detail. But what you should know is that we've got core courses. 15 credit hours of those. And these are courses you have to take unless you are doing what's called a waiver. OK, waiver means you've taken that course in your undergrad and you submit the required paperwork so you don't have to take the same course topic again and you can take an elect. So um, pretty straightforward. You can read for yourself the courses. The only one that I want to elaborate a little bit about is the statistics course. So we have three statistics courses for you to choose from. The marketing by numbers, MKT 6379, the OPRE 6301, and the OPRE 6359. Let me start with this last one because it's the most clear. This is an advanced statistics course. It is only for those students that know they want to pursue the marketing analytics track, that know and have some quantitative coursework uh in this area and uh would have no issues or problems with advanced statistics okay so for example if you're an engineer and you know you aced all your statistics courses fine if you want to pursue the analytics track you know this would be our recommendation on the other hand if you have a degree in let's say hospitality fashion really only took one statistics did poorly Clearly, you're not going to do well in that. So, you know, think three times before you take it. So that leaves for the majority of your our typical marketing students. That's not really pursuing a data science analytics track. The marketing by numbers and the statistics. Marketing by numbers is kind of the least uh, heavy on statistics. Let's put it that way. 60 70 percent of the course is statistics because you absolutely do need the basics of statistics the remaining 30 40 percent is more business math marketing formulas that you will be encountering like customer lifetime value how to manipulate indexes you know things of that nature so it's geared for students who don't want to get into the very analytics or data analysis tracks they might be in advertising, digital, product management, or a combination. 
the only caveat is it's only offered in the fall because not all our students take that. <clears throat> the in-between one is the OPRE 6301 statistics and data analysis. We suggest that if you're leaning to maybe taking quantitative courses, you definitely need to be probably taking uh, the OPRE 6301 without getting into the super advanced statistics. And the reason is because many courses outside of marketing require OPRE 6301 or 6359 as a prerequisite. So if you take this one and then you want to be taking, let's say, uh, business analytics with R uh, or Python, some class in Python, there may be very often, 95% of the time, they're going to require this one, OPRE 6301 or the advanced one. So this is kind of an in-between. Uh, this is one that you know I would suggest you might want to take, especially since you're in this coming into the spring and not um, going to take, can't take this marketing my numbers. This track is good for, the, uh, I'm sorry, this course, OPRE 6301, is perfectly fine for those pursuing this track, and I'll explain what that track is here in a minute, okay? So let's jump into the other tracks. Uh, before I do a lot of this information that I'm showing you, the degree plan, uh, course descriptions, how to compare key courses, job skills, it's available currently on our website. Just go to the MS in Marketing. There's a curriculum tab, and then you will see all these options. And going forward, too, you know, you can see future uh, fall 24 degree plans, updated uh, key courses, etc. So that information is always available to you in our website. Okay, so this is the advertising and branding track, and you can see for yourself. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. But the way these tracks work is that each one has a number of core courses. It can be uh, 12 credit hours. A few of them are 15 credit hours. Some are six credit hours. And what that means is. These are the most relevant courses that we offer within our school for those wanting knowledge in advertising and branding, okay? Um, and then these are some electives after you at some point take these courses. We really only recommend this <clears throat> for U.S. citizens or residents who are currently working in an advertising or branding role. And the reason is, there's there are jobs, but there's not a lot of high paying jobs and they don't typically require a master's degree. So we really haven't heard of an advertising or branding role uh, sponsoring or hiring international students. I mean, you might get an internship in that, but we really haven't seen any. I mean, it would be single digits out of all our internships. I mean, it might be three percent, but it's at sometimes none. Uh, and we certainly have never seen or heard of anybody being sponsored uh, for a visa uh, with OPT after they graduate in this track. OK, so keep that in mind. So this is an interesting track for international students. It is after the analytics, one of the highest visa sponsorship opportunities. It has high growth, good pay. Now, you must be strong in statistics. That's why we say, you know, you probably want to take OPRE 6301. Uh, but it's not as big a part of the job as it is for marketing analytics professionals. You have to probably spend 20% of your time with the statistical component uh, in your role, maybe a little bit less. Uh, it's more, and programming is not important, although there is one SQL, which is not very difficult, in my opinion, to learn, that is very useful for people here because you query databases to extract information, okay, uh, with SQL. Uh, the main skills is a combination of being very quantitative focused. So if you hate numbers, yeah, definitely this is not the track for you. But it combines those who don't mind looking at data, manipulating data, sorting it, filtering, applying some advanced uh, Excel functionality. For, uh, forget about pivot tables, but more like what if scenarios and solver. For those who want to, who are comfortable with that, but also like the business side, the creative, the insights, making recommendations for a company, 
this is a really neat uh, area to consider. OK, you can see kind of for yourself. What are the uh, different uh, courses here? So these this one has only six credit hours of core courses. And then the, these are out of um, the tab thing worked, uh, didn't work well. So don't think this is different from this down here. OK, so this is all all the different electives. OK, so it starts again into things like partial analytics, potentially a uh, MarTech ecosystem course. Um, you might consider introduction to programming course, but that's an elect. It's, again, it's not a core component of this track. Uh, so this is the digital track we recommend it for both U.S. Uh, citizens and also international high growth and good pay in some areas for international students. I would say that the social media part is just something you, you don't want to waste your time with because there's a lot of U.S. domestic students. They have an advantage over you with English proficiency, cultural knowledge, and just since it doesn't require a lot of master's level skills for most social media jobs. You know, you you're at a disadvantage, honestly, as an international student in applying for those jobs. Um, so, uh, I would say, as an international student, you should definitely be looking at those career paths within digital that tend to be more quantitative, more heavy on software data analysis than you know, let's say, social media, right? Just posting stuff and writing, etc. There is not a lot of statistics or math in this track. And then we have the marketing analytics, good for international students, high visa opportunities, high growth and pay. But as I mentioned, you have to be really strong at statistics and programming. If you just did average and OPRE statistics courses, it is not for you. If you're not good at programming, it is not for you. And you can say, well, I don't know. I've never tried programming. Nowadays, it's very easy. There's a lot of free courses out there. There's inexpensive courses like Udemy, Coursera, uh, where you can pay, you know, they have a coupon or something, 29 bucks, sometimes 19 for a course. You can go to YouTube and just say basic Python or whatever, and you try it. You see if you can, you know, you can pick it up if you like it. So uh, there's no reason to just make an assumption you'll probably do well take one of these courses and then flunk, OK? So be careful if you don't have knowledge and some hands on experience and just have a lot of confidence because overconfidence can be an issue, you know, not just in, in the degree, but in life, right? So uh, make sure that you uh, are knowing what you're getting into. Now, so product management, we recommend this one mainly for US citizens and residents. And the only opportunity we see for international students, and let me back up, product management is those that are responsible in a company for launching new products, managing new products. They have profit and loss responsibility. In other words, they are judged on whether they can generate X amount of revenue. They forecasted 2 million in sales, uh, and they forecasted you know, $400,000 in profit. So it's a high, high responsibility type of role for product manager. So they there's two catches for international students. One, they want you to have extensive industry experience in that area. So if product manager for healthcare, you need to have three, five years of experience in healthcare in the United States. If it's uh, software for, I don't know, for some particular type of industries. You need to have three to five years experience in that software, et cetera, et cetera. Since many incoming master students don't have that, it's very own, it's almost impossible for you to get into this role unless you start out as kind of an analyst, get that industry experience, and eventually get that role. One of our alums that we are going to be speaking with uh, went through this journey. Uh, she didn't start out as a product manager. She did three to five years work experience in consumer packaged goods. Then she got the opportunity to get into product management. It's high growth, excellent pay. Uh, so you also have to be strong in business. 
it's not heavy in statistics. I think for international students coming in, just know that more likely than not, you will not be starting in this role. The role that lends itself for this <clears throat> would be, in my opinion, this one. And that's kind of the uh, pathway that this alum followed. She started more as an analyst, learned a business, because with this, you can really learn the business, the industry, <clears throat> and you can continue that role. Uh, or if this opens up, then you can migrate into it. Okay, so just be aware of that. And <clears throat> finally, this is our most flexible track. It's a combination. You can combine digital with product management. You can combine any tracks you want. We see folks who own their own business or employed by a small, medium-sized company where you have to do a little bit of everything. You can't just be a digital person. You have to do market research. You have to do some data analysis, maybe launch uh, some new product or service offering, et cetera. Uh, good for senior marketing professionals too to round out. And this uh, track, what it allows you to do is take a lot of courses outside of marketing. So there's 21 credit hours of electives. You only have to take nine that have a marketing prefix, and the rest can be from business analytics, IT, um, you know, uh, entrepreneurship, some a, a few from finance, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, many of our students do this because they like that kind of the, the flexibility, et cetera, of just combining courses. Now, let me say this, the track name will not appear in your degree plan to begin with. And the reason is because we have a lot of people who are switching or mixing uh, courses, et cetera. So uh, if it were to appear in your degree plan, once you start in one track, you would not be able to switch, okay? After you take a certain number of courses. So this gives you the most flexibility. Look at it as something for guidance purposes. You can switch from one semester to another. If you come to me later in a few semesters and say, uh, I'm in digital, tell me what courses to take, I would refer you and I would just pull up the core tracks for digital and say, take this one, this one, and this one, okay? So that's why we created so that you can self-guide yourself We've already told you which courses are the most important within each track. Uh, again, you can combine, mix and match. The main thing is you need to look at, do that research and take the courses that align with your skills and for the, that are requ required for the job area you wanna get into. So uh, the there's something we have called course book, I would think, that they have in advising told you about this tool, you know, just go to coursebook.utdallas.edu. And right now you can't see anything except the current semester, fall uh, 23. But after uh, this coming Monday, you will see uh, spring 24. And what it allows you to do is then see the courses and you can see syllabi's in some cases, early on, very few faculty have their syllabi out there. So what you have to do in those cases is go back to a previous semester, okay? And that's what I'm referring to here. Usually they don't change much, okay? Check your Orion account for uh, your enrollment open date. Nobody can enroll until the first week of November. So you can see it next week, but it starts on a rolling basis after the first week of November. And new students tend to be towards the end because they're they give preference to students that are about to graduate uh, in the spring. So that's how this works. <laughs> if you have a hole on your account, this happens a lot. You have to go to where that message is. There is a, like an icon. Click on it. Should take you to a brief description or another link that takes you to a brief description that tells you what your hold is about. If you contact us, uh, me or Professor Dickinson, we have no insights into holes. Uh, we don't know. We have no access to your uh, information. So really what you have to do is see why you have a hold and who to contact. They will provide you in 90% of the cases who to contact, the bursar's office, because you haven't paid something, the registrar's office, because there's some issue with your transcript. Uh, there's the TB test, whatever it is. 
<laughs> it'll tell you who to contact. If for some reason it doesn't, please, if it's money related, I would start with a bursar's office. And if you that's not really the solution, then contact the advising office here at Jason. OK, if you email us, you know, a day or two may pass and then all we do is forward it to advising. OK, and we cannot lift hold. So, you know, we get a lot of emails. Hey, can you lift this hold? You're talking really to the wrong department. We don't even know that you have a hold. OK, so please keep this in mind. It can save you a lot of grief and critical time, right? You're trying to register for a class and you're not getting the answer you need. OK, so uh, new students, unless you're waiving a course, should take the following one to three courses in their first semester. The, the basic core MKT 6301, the statistics, and I already explained this, OK? Uh, now, let's say that you say, I don't want to take this statistics course here, but this one's not offered in the spring. OK, so in that case, what I recommend is you cannot take our next suggestion, the market research. In that case, you're going to be forced to take some elective. The reason you cannot take, let's say, another core course like consumer behavior or statistics, because the prerequisite is this. You must have taken it before you can start that. OK, so that eliminates other core courses. This one allows you to take it concurrently with MKT 6301 or OPRE 6301. OK, so, you know, uh, that is a consideration. That's why, unless you know you're absolutely horrible in statistics, and most internationals don't do bad in statistics, this is more of a problem for domestic students, I would suggest you take OPRI 6301 this semester, okay? Um, if considering a fourth course, it depends on the track, and there, you have to at least kind of start to say, well, uh, I guess eliminate tracks you're not interested in, like advertising and branding, because of the factors I mentioned, or marketing analytics. And maybe look for some courses that are in the, let's say, digital or the customer insights track or the product management track, et cetera. Okay. This is a very useful sheet we'll be providing you also with at the end of uh, sometime today, which shows you all the courses in future when they're offered in future semesters. OK, so you can see we're talking right now about spring, but we'll show you summer, fall, spring 25. OK, this can help you for planning long term uh, and we provide this updated every semester. So we keep pushing the, the dates that we show you. Uh, ongoing, but it shows you what's the prereq, okay, when it's offered. In some cases, some of these courses, like marketing by numbers that I mentioned, may not be offered all every semester. Uh, consumer behavior is not offered in the summer, so that's something you have to keep in mind, okay? So it's a good sheet if you have to pick between option A and option B, let's say of the electives, because we have all of them listed below. You might say, you know what, I better take it in the spring because it's not offered in the so in the summer and maybe there's a few that are only offered once a year so yes you might want to take it in the spring but the thing that's the big trip up for incoming students is prerequisites there's a lot of options if you had already taken mkt 6301 or waived it but most of you or many of you have not so you're going to have to be looking for prerequisite none or if it's a co-requisite. Co-requisite means you can take the, the, the course listed here at the same time as the one that you are interested in. So that's why I was saying you can take market research now as long as you're taking them in the spring with MKT 6301 and one of the statistics courses. Okay. So be aware of that. So how to decide which courses to take? This is now a summary. Again, see those videos on the track. Look at the documentation. Do your own research. Uh, if still unsure, it's always better to take core courses if you can. All right. Remember the prerequisite thing that blocks many of you. 
But I definitely recommend that the capstone strategy course be left for your last semester. And the reason is because that brings everything together. You would not do very well if you do it in your second semester because you haven't maybe taken other courses like consumer behavior, et cetera. So try to leave that one for the end. Now, if you don't do the step one and step two suggestions, then we have the following cheat sheet, we call it, where we've already answered the questions we're going to get, right? And um, also see these documents in the appendix. So here's our cheat sheet. And the way this works is if you've kind of decided you want to be in the digital track or the consumer and shopper insights track, and you were to email us because we've been doing a lot of emails for many years and we said you know at the end of the day we're always answering the same questions so what we've done here is we have put an order of priority for the spring or for the summer for the fall whenever we're looking at at the time a list of courses we would recommend in order of priority so for example for the dig students in the digital um, track if you come to us we would say this is our number one recommendation. This is our number two, three, four, five, et cetera. The reason often we do this is because we know, for example, these two courses, <coughs> excuse me, are not offered in the summer or fall. So social media and MarTech are not offered in the summer or the fall. So that's why it's number one priority because they are important courses in the digital track. Now, again, the catch is, do you have the prerequisite? So uh, we would recommend it to most of you. If it doesn't, if you haven't met the prerequisite, you couldn't take it. So what's the next option? Okay, so number three, does it have a prereq? No, it does not. Okay, you can take that. Marketing web analytics, does it have a prereq? No, it does not. You can take that. Okay, so on and so forth. It applies for every track. So be aware of that. Is it offered in future semesters? Does it have a prereq? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now, the other thing to be aware of is all the tracks have kind of a, an option where you can choose any three credit hour semester, and we try to limit it to certain relevant areas like business analytics, entrepreneurship. This is IT, management information systems, or, or PRE courses from any degree plan or catalog. So the rule is you have to follow our degree plan. You cannot just take courses that are not listed anywhere in our degree plan, okay? There's a lot of finance and accounting courses that we do not have in our degree plan. So the rule is you cannot take it, but you can do it once for three credit hours as long as that area is listed as an option for that track. So for digital, we don't have accounting and finance because, you know, we've got some electives you can already take and you wanted to, but they're not that relevant for digital. So we don't have that. One in this particular case of digital that does come up as a confusion is the information technology group has a social media class, has something called web analytics. So we have social media. We have not one, but two web analytics, an uh, introduction and an advanced one. So we don't recommend you take these, be quiet, because not that there's anything wrong per se with that course, is that it's taught from uh, information technology kind of point of view. And they happen to be more theoretical, like the social media one especially, whereas ours uses a tool to analyze data, social media listening platform. And in the case of the web analytics, we have 100% web analytics. They have a third web analytics, a third SEO, a third PPC, which is covered in another class. We don't think if you're a serious digital student that uh, three or four lectures on web analytics is enough. You need to have a course where it's all about web analytics because it is a big area. There's a lot of software, a lot of functionality within that software that you're not going to learn in three, four, uh, uh, lectures. Okay. So be aware of that because that also has in the past been kind of a, an issue with some students. So I'm not going to go through each one of these, but what I've done is I've kind of highlighted some courses, electives that do not have prerequisites. I think most of these do not. 
Uh, so these would be some options for you for the spring, the digital and interactive course. Uh, this advertising one has a allows you to take it at the same time as long as you're taking this one, which I would think everybody is. So it is a viable option for many of you, but it is advertising, right? Uh, the web analytics one, uh, this one does not have any prerequisite, so it's another marketing elective you can consider because it doesn't have a prerequisite. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is just kind of really emphasize uh, who to contact for what reason, because uh, eventually you you will kind of get the hang of it. But right now you can waste a lot of time and frustration uh, by contacting the wrong group. So for advising, if you have any questions about waivers, how to submit it, where to submit it. First of all, there's forms on their website that explain what a waiver is, what you have to submit. So just go to the JSON website, advising, uh, I think it's forms, and then look for the waivers. Transfers, which is if you've taken a master's level course at some other accredited university, you can bring it in. And in the case of transfers, you do deduct credit hours from your degree plan. So ours is 36. Let's say you took two courses, an MBA course here or there. You can bring in, let's say, six credit hours. And now you only have to do 30 credit hours. OK, so transfers are a master's course to replace a master's course. Waivers are undergraduate courses, so you don't have to take that repetitive core course like market research or consumer behavior, but you still have to take 36 credit hours total. But now you can take another course to substitute for that market research or consumer behavior, et cetera. OK. <clears throat> Courses, hold blocks, holds blocks, waiting lists, adding, dropping a course if you can't do it, degree audits. This is all the advising office at uh, JSON. Resources. Uh, so resume, workshops, internships, how to post, how to apply, all these things. You're not going to be ready until you complete two long semesters. OK, uh, so right now this should not be a concern for you. OK, uh, career first LinkedIn. That's at the JSON Career Center. It's called the CMC. For us, it's the student engagement, competitions, conferences, course curriculum, career advice. So like course curriculum, you know, we tell you what courses are available to take in future semesters, prerequisites, what we suggest by track, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, uh, I have concluded my piece of the presentation. So let's see, does anybody have any questions? More than that, that was really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mansur. Okay, uh, I'm just going to leave it open a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording at this point.